I'm Bethany Williams from Alumni Relations, and I am so excited to be here with all of you today. Today, we're joined by Full Sail Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Cardwell, who will be talking about overcoming adversity. Since graduation, film and entertainment business grad, Michael Cardwell has established himself as a talented cinematographer, producer, and the founder and creative director of Digital Brew, an award-winning video production company here in Orlando that specializes in animation and live action videos. Their list of clients is expansive and includes the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Gamefly, Florida Hospital, the YMCA, so many more. They have now won 17 Suncoast Regional Emmy Awards along with a number of Addy and Telly Awards as well. Thanks for being here, Michael. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for that. Now, before I turn this session over to you, I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping things. Um, I want to thank all of our participants for being here today and remind you to please use that chat box to network and connect with each other. Um, just remember, please keep it professional and on topic. Um, I also want to ask that you use your real name in the Zoom session here. We just need that for tracking and potential GPS points. And finally, I know we're all Zoom pros by now, but if you have any questions for Michael, I just want to direct you to the Q&A box. Um, please use that rather than the chat. He'll be monitoring the Q&A box for your questions. All right. Thanks for being here, Michael. Take it away. So I'm muting myself here. Hi, thanks, Bethany. Good to meet all of you. Uh, as Bethany said, I'm Michael Cardwell. I'm the owner and creative director of a Orlando production company and animation studio called Digital Brew. And today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about um, some of the challenges that I've faced in my life and kind of what the journey to get here looked like for me. So let me, let me share my screen here. All right. So before we get, before I start going into the, uh, oh, that's the wrong, I messed up. that's the wrong slide there. Okay, so before we get too far into the presentation, like I wanna just first tell you guys, like this is not, this is uh, not like, a, this is a little bit different than some of the other Hall of Fame presentations or kind of more technical production side presentations. Um, this is more of like a story that I wanna, that I wanna tell you guys. And it's kind of an intimate story that I'm gonna share with you um, because I know a lot of people that are at Full Sail um, that are students or even re graduates or whatever, whatever, wherever they are, wherever you are in your life, um, have challenges that are personal that aren't really don't really have anything to do with school, but that impact like your emotional well-being, your mental well-being, and your ability to just kind of feel like sometimes you, even to get through the day. So um, maybe as I kind of do a little more of my introduction here. If you guys want to put anything in the chat right now that that tells me a little bit about some things you're struggling with personally, I can try to speak to some of those and, and tailor that into my story here. So, um, little, like Bethany said, I'm the owner and creative director of Digital Brew. I'm in the Full Sail Hall of Fame. I have my company has 17 Emmy Awards. Um, I have 11 of those. Uh, we have like 13 Addy Awards, eight Telly Awards. You know, we work with all different types of brands all over the world. Some of the ones that Bethany didn't name were like Amazon, 3M, Cisco, Cash Money Records. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of really big blue chip clients. I have a company here in Orlando um, that where I employ 18 people, um, and with the contractors that we use, we probably have about 25 people. So, you know, I have, I also have like some, you know, a couple of real estate investments and things like that. So like my things like are going really good for me right now, but it wasn't always like that. <laughs> so, and I know a lot of these presentations, you guys just hear like, oh, rah, rah, here's how to like, here's how I got my Emmy or my Emmy award or my Oscar award, or, you know, here's how I got, here's like the things I did at the end of my journey. But what I don't think that enough of story gets told is like what happened leading up to that and especially for someone like myself where it was pretty darn hard to get to where I am today so that's what I'm going to talk about so when I got to full sale this was the question that I always dreaded that people were going to ask so what'd you do before you came here 
So uh, starting out before, so the answer to that question is, is uh, basically, I grew up in a very nice family, <laughs> middle-class family, no problems with them or anything like that. Uh, but I, when I was 13 years old, I had a very traumatic event happen to me. Um, and I just became very lost, um, in my mind and in my emotionally, in my decision-making and everything. And it's, and I didn't tell anyone about it. And so, because I didn't tell anyone about it, uh, I, you know, found another way to deal with that, which was using alcohol and drugs. And from age basically 14 to 27, I was high like every single day and that kind of ran my life. So, and I got really heavy into using drugs. And if anybody knows about using drugs, like they're very expensive. So the next thing you know, you start like getting into like selling drugs and doing all kinds of stuff. That's not, that's very dangerous and not good for you as a, for your, for your, this is just bad decision-making. Okay. Um, in 1998, I got convicted of a felony for drug use. So I'm actually a convicted felon even, and I, that's something consequence of my behavior that I've had to deal with. And I still have to deal with that to this day when I want to get loans or do certain things like that, that makes it harder for me to, to kind of do a lot of the things that I want to do. Um, and then in, so basically in, in 2003, I, um, got in a lot of trouble and, um, like I was looking at a 20 year to life prison sentence for the trouble that I got in. And I don't want to say this to sound like it's, glor I don't want, I want to make sure it's clear that I'm not trying to glorify any of this because this is really, this is not a good thing. Um, but I was looking at a 20 year to life prison sentence. And basically what they told me was that like, Hey, look, like there's this guy that, you know, he's in trouble already. Um, he's going to go down either way. We're going to raid his house. If you tell us what he has in your house, I'll let you go. So of course, you know, think like, Oh, I'm not going to tell on people because that's what you see in the movies and Goodfellas and all this stuff. You don't rat on your friends and all this kind of thing. So at the time I checked myself into rehab, I've spent one year of my life in rehab, um, total. And I went back to my group at rehab and I asked them what I should do if I should tell or what. And this one guy that was in there was a gang member and a, and a murderer. And he's like, literally, he was the first one to talk. And I thought he was going to be like, dude, I'll kick your butt myself. If you say anything to these about, if you tell him this dude, but he didn't say that he said like, dude, he's like, if you don't do this, you're an idiot. Like he's already going down anyway. This is going to be the first right thing you've done in your life. Like you need to do this. And I kind of even get emotional kind of thinking about it. And that was the day, like the, drug addict in me died and the person that I am is born today. And I decided right then that I was going to change my life. And I decided, you know what, I've been so I've been high since I was 14 years old. I'm 27. Now I don't even know what it's like to be sober as an adult. So um, I said I was going to give it a year. Okay. And and just try being sober for a year. And you know what? I can always go back to getting high. It's not going anywhere if I want to, if I choose to do that. But I really need to give this sobriety thing a chance. So when I graduated from full sale, uh, or sorry, when I graduated from rehab, I came directly here to full sale. My mom actually found full sale because of course she's always worried about me and wanting to find something for me to do and make something of myself. And uh, I was making videos for fun with my friends during that time. And so she found full. So, Hey, you can go here and be a filmmaker and make this your career. And I was like, Oh, that sounded pretty cool. Cause one thing that is important to me and still is, is that I want to do something that I feel cool doing. And at the time I thought drugs was that thing. Um, and, you know, and so I wanted to find something that also made me feel cool and being in the entertainment industry sounded like even cooler than that. So, um, when I came to Full Sail, I had literally lost everything. I had the only thing I had was a bag of clothes and my pool cue, and that's it. And and a desire because I wanted to like I really wanted to change my life when I came here. And so um, when I came here, I I I worked harder than all the other students here, or you know like as hard as I could, not harder than all the other students, but I worked hard. I surrounded myself with other students that were also working hard and were passionate about school. 
you know, I didn't go out with the people that were like drinking or doing drugs and that kind of thing. I mean, I, you know, I did go to the bars and things when they were, when we'd have like parties or rap parties or hang out with people, but I didn't, I didn't drink. I didn't do any drugs. And I really just tried to make it a point to be able to surround myself with good people because that's, that's really what's helped me kind of lift myself up. And I really wanted it when I got here. And, uh, you know, when I tried to get an apartment, when I got here, I couldn't find anywhere that rent would rent to me because I was a convicted felon and it was a pretty recent, um, offense. So I had to live in like a really crappy neighborhood. Like there's the only one that would rent to me where there was like other, you know, basically a lot of crime in that neighborhood and you hear gunshots and that kind of thing. Um, and you know, basically when I, so, 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 <laughs> so, so after my time, so after my year, so basically I said, I told myself, Hey, I'm going to stay sober for a year. So when the year mark hit, I, I'll just completely honest with you guys, I lit a candle and I smoked a joint and I thought, okay, I did it. I made it the year. And then when I did the, when I smoked the weed again, like it did not feel the same. Like I didn't really want to be high anymore. And so at that point I just, that was the last time that I did that and I've been sober ever since. And so that's been, I don't know, like 18 years, let's see, 16, 7, 15, 16 years, something like that. Um, so now things are going pretty good. I'm at full sale. I'm, I'm sober. I'm getting great grades. I'm doing extra projects. I'm hanging out with people that are making good choices and not hanging out with the people that are making bad ones. Um, and as I came to the end of my time at full sale, I had to decide where I wanted to go um, and what I, where I wanted to move to. And, and in the entertainment industry, it's usually either New York or Los Angeles. And so I decided I was going to go to New York. And, um, but, you know, in tandem with time making that decision, uh, I got into a very toxic uh, relationship with a woman who was very abusive. She was a big time drug addict. I was not ready to get into a, into a relationship um, be, you know, just because I wasn't emotionally ready, but I felt like I, I needed a, a companionship. And I found this person that was kind of like the old people I used to hang out with, except honestly, she's about a million times worse than any person I ever hung out with before. And I thought I could change her. I was like, oh, I changed. Oh, I can change her. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I learned is you can't change other people if they don't want to be changed. So um, anyway, after about, so during the time I was trying to pick out and to go to New York, I found out that she had gotten pregnant. And so then I had to make a decision. Well, shoot, like, you know, I don't want to, I was, I was, we were breaking up and I didn't want to stay with her. So I had to make a decision. Like, do I follow my dream to go to New York or do I stay here and be a father and follow that dream, which is not really a hard decision at all. So I've been in Orlando ever since. And, um, you know, I'm happy to say my son is 15 years old and doing great. His mother not even in the picture anymore. Um, so I was able to save him from that situation as well. But I guess the reason I say that story is because sometimes we get in these toxic relationships that kind of really impact our, our well being, not just as not just at school, but just everything and provide a lot of stress. And sometimes it feels like you can't get out of that. And uh, it was really hard for me to get out of it. So if you're in a situation like that, like I can relate. Um, and you know, I, I kind of got to the point where, look, if I'm going to do everything by myself, I'm going to do it by myself. And that's where I got decided to kind of get rid of her and move on from that, uh, toxic relationship. Um, so then being in Orlando, now I'm stuck here is how I thought of it. And there was not a lot of opportunities here at the time. And I, uh, so I had to ride bike taxi it was like my main job when I graduated full sail. I edited wedding videos 15 hours a week. I did like air checks at some other commercial place 15 hours a week, not really using my degree. You know, I wanted to go to full sale to like make music videos or work in TV or reality TV or something like that. And so I was feeling pretty like, you know, down about it, but I, I still believed that things were going to work out for me. And, uh, I got all, so I also looked at every opportunity I could take at career development and I got 90% of my jobs from career development while I was there uh, after graduation. And one of those jobs was for a 
you know, this guy that had a business coaching company and it was filming a seminar at the airport Marriott. So also not super glamorous job, but Hey, it was better than bike taxi. So I took it. And, uh, um, anyway, that guy, Sean, who hired me for that job, um, his company at that time had 11 clients that were all in that room. <clears throat> and now his company is a global company with an office headquartered in Los Angeles and one in Sydney and one in London. And I've been doing all the videos for him ever since. He became my business mentor. He gave me tons of referrals for, for other business. I pretty much um, you know, ran my whole company off of that relationship with him um, for the first three years in business. So after graduating, after two years after graduation, I, uh, um, I did, like I said, I don't, was doing freelance and stuff for Sean, stuff like that. Um, an opportunity came up at Full Sail to um, work in Platinum, which is their marketing division there. And uh, I was super excited about this because this was like, wow, this is going to be like a legit, like my first like real production job. Um, and I applied and I, I came down to me and another guy and they hired the other guy. And I was like, so disappointed about that. Cause I was just so excited. I tried everything to try to get that job. Um, but luckily for me at Full Sail, they said, well, actually we're starting this other new department that, um, that is for online education. We need people to make videos and animations for that. So we think you'd be a better fit for that department. So I did get hired on there. And while I was there, I taught myself how to do motion graphics and design. And I worked with a bunch of designers and animators and I got really good at that stuff. And all the time through my career, I've been like teaching myself how to do extra stuff and really just pushing myself as hard as I could. Um, because, you know, this industry is like super competitive. And if you're not working hard, then somebody else is going to outwork you and get the, get those opportunities. So so I, I was always trying to do extra things and get better and hone my skills. Um, by the, I worked at Full Sail for about five years. And after graduating that from Full Sail, I, uh, or I mean, after um, being at Full Sail for five years, um, I got really good at design and animation. And, and I would consider myself an animator now. Um, and that, and um, I had an opportunity to uh, do a, month-long video shoot with Sean, that same guy, and I had to quit, I had to take a risk and quit Full Sail uh, to do that job. And I didn't really want to do that because it felt unsafe. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and do that and um, quit my job, start my own company with that, with the, with that big job, and which I started in my spare bedroom at my house, just by myself, um, and the very first guy, well, the, so I needed people to help me with stuff. So the first guy that I hired, I needed to be a designer and animator because I'm okay at that, but not great. I'm more of a video production guy. So I interviewed all these people and this one guy's stuff was like amazing. The best stuff like out of anyone's, I didn't even know why he wanted to work for me because I was only offering like an internship and, uh, he, you know, it came time for his interview and he was late for the interview and he called me. He's like, Hey, Lam, my car broke down or whatever. I'm going to be late. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Like that stuff happens. So, cause I really wanted to hire this guy. So when he got there, he was very nice. Um, and I did end up hiring him. And then after I hired him, I found out that he had no bank account, no driver's license, no car. Like I couldn't even write him a check because he couldn't cash it. He had no credit cards. So he couldn't like get a free app even on iTunes for like task, you know, task sharing app. And I was like, okay, well, you know, this guy's worker is really good. I've been in this situation before, like where I was, didn't have a lot of these things. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know, maybe this guy's like me. And after about a month of working together, like I found out he was not like doing, making good choices <laughs> and I ended up having to fire him. And the first business, so this was, if for any of you that are starting to, your own business, like this is my, the first business decision that I made and my company was a complete failure. And I was like, shoot, like, man, I don't know if I can do this. Like, you know, this is my very first decision. I already screwed this thing up. Um, but I just kept on believing and kept on, I tried again. And the next guy that I hired, um, instead of him is this guy named Bo and he's our animation director here now. And he's been here for the 10 of the 10 years that we've been in business. So, um, I kind of lesson I learned there is that, yeah, I'm going to fail a lot, but I just got to keep going and stay the course and, uh, and then, and keep working hard. And then things tend to, to work out. Um, 
so anyway, fast forward to now, I've had, uh, like I said, I have 18 employees. I have a property that I own that we have our, our business in here in downtown Orlando. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a, a very long journey for me to get here. And I know, again, I know you guys hear a lot about like how, you know, like kind of the later stages of people's careers in this industry. And you might see like, oh, like this dude's in the hall of fame, he's got his own company and all this stuff. But man, this thing was not easy. And I know that I also know that a lot of people as students at Full Sail are struggling with things that were like, you know, way harder than what I have to deal with. Maybe you have stuff with your family that you're dealing with, or you have homelessness or your you know, financial problems or, you know, things like that. And I know that it's really hard. And I just, I wanted to really put this presentation together to tell you like, Hey, look, man, like you're not alone. Like, and even if you think your thing isn't as hard as what, what it was for me, like for you, for the person that's dealing with it, it feels like huge. So it's not, you can't really compare yourself to anybody else in that type of thing. Like for you, it's a big deal. And for a lot of other people, it is too. It's not just you. There's a lot of other people that the things you don't really talk about, like the things I just told you guys that are, people are having these problems like this. So, you know, I'm here to tell you that like, you can get through these things if you just like believe in yourself, work hard and, and try and overcome these things to the best of your ability. And that's a couple of things here. Now I'm going to go into next. Did anybody, I guess we didn't have any, I don't see any, where's the, are the questions or is it in the Q and A if they write something or to be in the chat? No questions to the Q and A box yet. Um, just a reminder okay. to put your questions there. We've got a couple of comments in the chat box. Okay. Let me see where I can see that. More chat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Denton, that's true. Denton said that there's a lot of people, he's been in the mental health field for 25 years and knows the struggle. Yes. It's definitely a struggle, man. And, and I know that there's a lot of people out there like this. So, um, so anyway, I just, that's main thing I want to tell you guys, if you are struggling with something like you're not alone and you can do it. <laughs> so here's some things that I've learned from my journey here is that like, if there's like, for me, like the thing that happened to me with my traumatic event is that this is how I felt like I had like, you know, this like prison in my mind. Um, and I, you know, uh, this is another picture that I think felt pretty, that look was pretty representative of how I would feel sometimes, not all the time, but it would just randomly control me um, to the point where like, you know, I just would feel a lot of shame and stuff like that. And when you go to these counseling sessions or like hear people, you probably heard people say, oh, you just need to let it go. I'm like, yeah, dude, you fucking let it go. You know, how did, how do you, how do you do that? So what I learned about that is that um, the way that you let things go is out of your mouth. Okay. So is by talking about it, by sharing about it, of course, with someone that you trust, um, writing it down, um, by getting it out of your head basically, because, and the reason why I have this soda can thing here is that because if something's bothering you, like the thing that happened to me was bothering me, it's basically like shaking up a soda can. And then every once in a while, you know, without your control, it just explodes. And, and that's when you, when I started making like bad decisions and, you know, feeling a lot of shame and, the, and this, I couldn't control how I was feeling, but the more I, like I said, I spent a year of my life in rehab. I'm not saying you need to go to rehab to do this, but in rehab, you talk about all this stuff. And that's where I found out that the more I talked about it, the more control I had over it instead of it controlling me. So now like, I doesn't, I don't even think about it hardly anymore. And you can compare it to like, now if I want to drink that soda, it's in a bottle now. And I'm just, I've slowly undone the cap. So even though it was shaken up, like I let the air out slowly and now I can drink and it doesn't explode all over me. So that's kind of like what talking about it can do for you. If there's something that's, that's really bothering you and it doesn't have to be a huge traumatic thing. It's just in general. If something's bothering you or if impacting you and like you're keeping you up at night, the more you talk about it, the less power that it has over you. All right. So then 
I talked about this a little bit, but try to surround yourself with good people. There's a lot of really good people at Full Sail in your life, in the workplace. There's also a lot of people that are being stupid and making bad choices. So, you know, if you if you surround yourself with people making bad choices, then guess what? You're and you're one of those people. If you surround yourself with people making good choices, then you become more like them, and together you can lift yourselves up to be even better. So this was something that was really important to me while during my time at Full Sail. I made it a point to hang out with people that were doing that were passionate about filmmaking, that wanted to do extra projects, that wanted to get good grades, and the ones that were like screwing around, which were like the ones that I probably would have hung out with before. Like I've seen some of those guys after graduation, they're not working in the industry and they're not doing too well. So the ones that I, all the ones I surrounded myself with at Full Sail, they're all were doing something in the industry. You know, they're a grip in New York or they have their own photography company or their own production company or something like that. So. This is a really important thing to do, especially at Full Sail. And these relationships that we're making at Full Sail, these ones will um, are ones that can last a lifetime. I still talk to a lot of my my friends that I went to school with, and I haven't some of them I haven't seen in person, you know, in 16 years. But I still talk to them every once in a while, and we give each other leads or jobs or you know, just check in with each other. And it's just, so this is like, this is really critical to your success, not just at full sale, but just in general, like take a, take an inventory of who you're surrounding yourself with. And if those, some, a lot of bad things are happening, this could be something that could help solve that problem for you. Okay, so this is another thing that's just sort of a life lesson, I guess, is like what I've, what I've learned is like, the only thing that I can change is me. And I thought this picture was like really cool to kind of show that, um, to, to kind of tell that story here. But, um, you know, like with, when this toxic relationship I was in, like, I thought I could change her. I, I tried really hard to change her and I did everything in my power to try and make it so that she would be the person I wanted her to be, but she's not that person, you know? And I had to take, I had to, come to the realization that I have to be the one to change. And that meant not being with her, even with the, my drug use. Like I can't be blaming it on drugs or my trauma or whatever. Like I have to be the one to make the decision to do this stuff. Like if I got a bad grade, it's my fault. It's not the teacher's fault. It's not anyone else's fault because I'm the only one that can, that is in control of that situation. So you know, I'm very careful about not blaming other people. Of course, sometimes, you know, you get in a car accident on the way to school, somebody rear-ended you or I don't know, whatever, like, yeah, that's not your fault. But for the most part, and for most things, you just, you got to be very careful about blaming other people for your problems, because ultimately you are the only one that it can change things. And if you have that kind of, when I have that kind of mindset, then I'm able to take more control of my life and and i'm and i'm able to surround myself with better people or you know decide not to do drugs or get out of this toxic relationship or work really hard or figure out how to make it work in orlando and not blame orlando for the re being stuck in orlando the reason why i don't have a good career now because i do because i realized hey i have to make this work so i'm going to make it happen and another thing I want to say about being in Orlando and being stuck here is that I've said this before in other presentations is that like you can really make it anywhere. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. If you have to go back home or something like that, like that's fine. You can still make it there. And I just talked to a guy, a, a graduate, graduated about a year ago, and he's living, he had to go back to uh, Virginia. And I, I didn't know he was there. And I, I was like, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, oh, I'm back in Virginia. I was like, oh, really cool. And he's like, yeah. You know how you told me you could make it anywhere? He's like, I'm doing great over here. I realized I could, you know, that made me believe I could do it. And he's he's making good money doing audio stuff uh, out in Virginia where, you know, he's sort of like not in a major market. So, so anyway, like having, just having this personal accountability is like really important to being successful um, in school and in your life or it was, it has been for me. Um, another thing that, I think is important is that you're going to fail a lot and that's fine. That's good. Actually, like the more you fail, the more you learn. So as long as you don't like quit, then you haven't actually failed. So like when I tell you the story about 
that first guy that I hired and the first business decision was just a complete disaster. Like, you know, I, and then I just tried again and it worked out. So I've, I have tons, countless, countless stories of how many times I failed. Um, when I first came to full sale, actually, I would, I was like fresh three months sober out of rehab and I was just sleeping a lot. I never had a calendar. I never had to keep track of any time or anything like that. And I was late to class, like my very first class, like two or three times. And they're like, dude, you're going to fail if you miss another time. And I was like, oh crap, you know? So like I learned, I basically, I got a whiteboard and started putting all the <laughs> dates on there to make sure I wasn't going to be late. But I almost failed out of my very first classes just because I wasn't keeping good good time. But that was a good lesson for me um, because then I didn't do that anymore. So, you know, as long as since I didn't continue to be late, I it worked out to be okay. So, um, you know, even redoing, you know, relapsing on drug use. Yeah, I relapsed a couple, you know, that that time, actually a couple other times after that, but I didn't keep doing it. I, I made the changes and I went back and kept, now I've been, you know, stayed on the sober path. So it's okay to fail as long as you just don't keep making the same decision, bad decisions over and over again. That's, there's a little saying about the definition of insanity is kind of making the same mistakes over and over again. So failing is okay. Just try and learn from it and do better next time. And in our careers, like, again, I've, I've, I've failed many, many times. I've screwed up videos. I've screwed up edits. I've screwed up timelines. I've, you know, told people I was going to have something and, and I didn't have it to them on time. And, you know, I just, I made those mistakes once and then I don't make them again. And that's part of the reason why I think I've been able to be successful in my career is that, is that I've been able to learn from these things and, and take failure as a learning opportunity and not something that's just going to bring me down and sink my whole ship. All right. And then kind of the last thing that I want to just end on here is that, you know, I, my, my thought process is that like you can accomplish any that I can accomplish anything if, but the first thing I have to do is first, I have to believe that it's possible, not just for me, but for anyone. Then I have to believe that it's possible for me, which sometimes that can be really hard to do because you see someone like, you know, maybe you see someone like me and you're like, oh, that dude has his own company, but I'll never be able to do that. Well, then you're already like not, then the chances of you being able to do that go down considerably. So you have to believe that it's possible for you and it is possible for you if you believe it. And then you have to just work really hard and keep on believing even through all the failures and trauma and all this stuff that happens to you. If you work hard and believe that it's gonna happen, then good things are gonna happen. I thought I was gonna be a director of photography, then I thought I was gonna be an editor, I thought I was gonna work on music videos, you know, and my path kind of took a very windy road, but now I have the job, an even better job that I even thought I was ever gonna have because I own my own production company. And that's because I always kind of knew in the back of my brain that it was gonna work out. And I, I just tried to outwork everybody else. So. So this is, I think this picture is a good example of how it feels sometimes when you have all these things to do with schoolwork or your other things, maybe your personal life that's kind of feeling like overwhelmed, but you just kind of just chip away at these things one at a time. And pretty soon these dragons become like a lot smaller. They just vaporize into, into nothing. But even, even now today, I have different dragons that are, that I'm trying to overcome, you know? So they do kind of change and come and go. Um, but this is, you know, this, this belief thing sounds really stupid and kind of hippie bull, bull crap that you hear on like, you know, self-help books or whatever, but it actually does work. I'm here to tell you, if you believe it, that is a powerful, very powerful tool for you to be successful, um, in your career. So, so, so anyway, that's, that's, I, like, again, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about my story, just like, again, to make sure that you, if anyone is struggling with something like that, to let you know that you're not alone and that, you know, getting to be where and where I am in my career um, was not an easy road. And I think there's a lot of other people that are like that too. So, you know, you can definitely do it if you, if you, if you want, if you really want it, you gotta really want it, but if you know, you can overcome any of these obstacles to have a successful career.
Michael, there are a couple of questions that came in. Um, if you okay. maybe want to address one, I'll read one of them. During the time of transition from the old you to who you were trying to become, are there any activities or coping mechanisms you use to strengthen your mind to stay on track? Yeah. Um, where, who, which one? Let me read that again. Which one was that one from? It's in the answered. Um, answered. When okay. you were transitioning to the, the you you were trying to become, activities yeah, yeah. or coping mechanisms. Yeah. So, well, um, I tried. Yes. So I remember when I first got sober and I came here, like I thought I would never be able to be creative again without drugs. And uh, one time I decided I was going to do like a collage, like outside of school. And that was something I would do on drugs a lot. And I would just, I started cutting out all these pictures and all this stuff. And after about two hours, I looked around the room and I had like stuff cut out all over the floor. And I made this thing that I felt really proud of. And that was a moment in my life where I realized, you know what, I don't need drugs to do this stuff. Like I can do the exact same thing without these, th without this stuff. So I would say trying to do like, you know, I tried to, so, and with that in mind, like I did more artistic stuff that I used to do before that I thought I needed drugs to do to be like cool or come up with the cool ideas. The di ideas are in my brain either way. Like I didn't need drugs to pull them out. So that was something that I thought was really, that was a really powerful moment for me. Um, I also went to, uh, well, I, you know, I went to AA and NA and stuff like that, um, which, was is great place to 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 share with but honestly like i didn't want to hang out with a bunch of drug addicts still i wanted to just be a normal person like that was my dream when i came here was just to be a regular person i, I didn't you know i really didn't care what kind of job i had i just wanted to be a productive member of society so instead of going to like these aa meetings and hanging out with a bunch of drug addicts i decided to go to church instead and i went there for a while for about a year, I didn't really connect with those people that much either, but, but, you know, things like that, like I just tried to find communities where people were like making, living the kind of life that I wanted to live and, and, and spending my time with them, you know, reading about things like that, like about self-help books and that kind of thing were things that um, I used. And then, you know, just if I, something was bothering me, I would call, I would talk to somebody about it. And that's probably my biggest coping mechanism, I think, is just getting it out of my head and into the ether. So it doesn't like all those thoughts don't like run my life. Got a few more questions here. Okay. Um, one is, um, how do people stay in touch with you? Oh, you can stay in touch with me by, uh, well, you can hit me up on LinkedIn or Facebook or um, either one of those. I'm red. You can find me easily just Michael Cardwell if you search on there. And if you friend me, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely accept it. That's probably the best place. You can also email me just directly if you want at michael at digitalbrew.com. I always get back to students um, that, that, that want to talk about whatever uh, the, you, and if you need help with anything I'd be happy to help lots of comments here about your inspiring story um okay. really an inspiration right. we just appreciate you sharing it with us um we, no problem you're doing amazingly well and um it's just a real inspiration to everybody um there are a few others here if you want to uh, there are yeah, there's some long <laughs> I'll, let me read through one of them I'll, I'll read this let me read this first one here <laughs> Okay, so this is the an, an anonymous attendee. Um, so we're working from home. So first of all, thank you for sharing that. Whoever put that in there, um, I, that sounds like really like things are being really hard for you. So um, you know, I can I can relate to that, and I, and I think everyone has their own. You know, not every, but a lot of people. Anyway, I I can relate to that, and thank you for sharing that. Um, as far as working from home, um, 
if if you have a job and you're trying to balance full sale and a job, I know that that's that's really difficult. So um, and that can make like doing extra projects more difficult um, to to do and 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 that kind of thing. Um, it, I would just say you just have to as far as far as like balancing job and school, you probably just need to really be careful about how you're scheduling your time. And what you're doing in your free time and maybe you make a dedicated time for school work rather than just like oh, i'll kind of do it when i feel like it um as far as networking from home goes um i don't know it's very it's pretty hard with the with the way things are with COVID. all thank god we're coming out of that now um but there's lots of facebook groups social media groups that you can join um there's you know i think full sale has a lot of virtual community stuff now right bethany Absolutely. Just about every Thursday night, um, alumni.fullsale.edu. We've got mixers and um, please feel free to jump into any of them. The Full Sale community is just amazing. A yeah. great thing to do. And, and if, you know, maybe with your fellow classmates, you could set up just like a monthly jam session where you guys just talk about projects or hang out on Zoom. We do, I, we do that with our the Hall of Fame people. We do that once a month or so, we just get on a call and hang out and talk and kind of share what was been going on. So that's a good way to do networking from home um, as well. Um, so I don't know, hopefully that was helpful for you, but. And well, actually, let me say one more thing about this. So I see here that um, you've been a struggle to keep up your creativity I definitely get that. And, you know, when you're facing some the adversity that I can see that you have written here, that, that it could be even more hard for you to just feel like you can even have, like you even want to do that. So this is where I think like talking about stuff like that, like whatever you're struggling with, of course, with someone that you trust and just sharing about those things that are bothering you is going to make it so that you won't feel as like as much of a struggle to keep up your creativity because those things will lose power over you. And so then, and as far as being creativity, you just got to get in there and start doing it. I find like the hardest part of being creative, doing creative stuff is the getting started part. And then once I kind of get into it, then I can start, I really get rolling. So those two things I think will be helpful for you to be able to, you know, deal with some of the stuff that's bugging you and also getting, keeping your creativity going. Right, let's go to the next one here. Yeah, Carly's asking about advice you'd offer to someone who's coming back from a setback in their career. Okay, let me see. Thanks to everyone who's written in these questions. They're <laughs> wonderful and amazingly detailed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you gotta have the backstory so you know what's going on. So, so okay, Carly, so I mean, I think like, well, I had the same experience. Like I had a major setback in, in my career. I went to college twice. I flunked out both times before full sale. Um, so those are some setbacks that I had. And then when I came to full sale, I wanted, I had a dream, you know, I had a, wanted to go start my career in another place. I had to make it work from here. So I would just say like, again, it comes back to like believing that it's going to work out. And sometimes the end of that path is not what you thought it was going to be. But it, 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 if you if you work hard and, and believe in it, I know it's not like a broken record and it might sound kind of stupid. But what does that mean in a like that? What can I do right now? Well, I don't know. That's going to be kind of different for everyone. But, you know, think of a goal. Like what's the what is the goal that you want? and and put that out into the ether into the universe and you know there's a thing you know things get provided to you if you ask for them and that's just like what that means is like creating a mindset that like hey i want this i'm gonna do this and then you start figuring out the steps that you're gonna take to get there and even if you're even if you have to you know live in, a, in another town or or uh you know you've had these other setbacks um Let's see, number of the field. Yeah, so if you've had these setbacks, like it's okay. Like we all have these setbacks. You just have to kind of reset, figure out, come up with a plan, and then start moving toward that plan. And if that, you don't, you know, sometimes the plan will branch off to another thing that might be even better than you even thought of. So 
I think if you just first need to just figure out a, an initial goal and start working toward that, and then, you know, I think that's, that would be the first, I guess, step I would say. And then again, just believe and work hard and things, I think it, it, things tend to usually work out if you do that. Uh, Keith, I just read your message, your message. I'm, I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keep stay on the path, dude. Yeah. Chantanel. Yes. So that's basically exactly what happened to me. So I get that. And that's very, that is a very hard thing that happened to me too. So, you know, it's a long road, but um, I, I found the more that I shared about it, the less power that it had over me. So that would be my advice to you on that. Okay, and uh, the anonymous attendee. Yeah, I know, dude, you have to separate yourself from these people because if you don't, then you're just gonna it's too hard to change. You got to change people, places, and things if you really want to get out of escape, you know, drug addiction. So um, all those things have to change to give you the best shot for success with that. Okay, so let's see, Devon, do you think the opportunities have expanded beyond? Uh, yeah, so D Devon is, says, do you think these opportunities are standing beyond New York and California at this point? Or you say it would still be beneficial to try and travel for work? Uh, dude, yes. Like, I, I I don't travel anywhere. I have all of these clients that these literally blue, like, you know, blue chip clients, and I, I don't ever leave the office. They all, I found them all on the internet. So, no, I don't, I don't think you need to necessarily go there, but it kind of depends on what you want to do, too, um, that you may want to to go there. Um, but you don't have to, like, there's lots of ways that you can be, have a successful career like I did and not go to those, excuse me, not go to those, those markets to do that. Okay. Was there, let's see, was there another, did I miss one, Bethany? I think there's a few that are just thanking you. Um, and, um, everything you've said has resonated with so many people. So yeah, thank you. I know there's, I know. Yeah. I, like I said, I know there's a lot of people at, at, that are struggling with stuff. And so uh, yeah, I'd love to help. Uh, yeah. Chantel, Chant, Chantanel, I, I do do some mentorship. I'd be, I don't have like a, a lot of dedicated time for that. Um, but I'd be, I always do like phone calls or whatever um, to, to just have to help however I can. So yes, in some capacity, yes, I'd be happy to, to help. Um, if you want to hit me up on LinkedIn or Facebook, we can set something up, time up to talk, no problem. And then an anonymous attendee is mentioning a book, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, that has been recommended to help deal with childhood trauma. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read that one, but um, I'll have to check that one out. Thanks for sharing that. And thank all you guys for sharing all this stuff that you put in here. So I know like this is pretty personal stuff. So I appreciate you guys taking a chance on put on, on wanting to talk about that here too as well. Well, we appreciate your honesty, Michael. And um, clearly your story is, is just so powerful and, and really inspirational to everybody. So I wanna thank you again for sharing it and, and thank everybody who's attended today. Um, it's, it's a really important topic and it's so much of who we all are as artists too, right? Um, so again, thanks to everyone um, for being here today and taking part in this, of this session.